In the first information literacy lecture, we discuss how you cite your work. Intellectual property belongs to whoever created the work just as much as physical property, like a coat or bicycle does. Intellectual property includes ideas that we have developed, the words we have used when speaking or writing, or photographs that we have taken, or pictures that we have drawn. That means that if we are going to use ideas, words, or pictures belonging to someone else, we need to cite their work. To claim it as our own is plagiarism. In the academic world, it is a very serious offense. In the business world, where there are laws that protect intellectual property, you can end up in court. In both cases, the consequences can be serious. There are different ways of using intellectual property. If you are using someone else's words, you can quote them directly or rephrase their ideas in your own words. In both cases, it requires that you give them credit for these ideas. A citation contains all the information that someone would need to find an article, a book, or whatever other source from which the material comes. This will typically include the name of the author, the title of the work, the date that it was published, the name of the publisher, and so on. These can be placed in footnotes at the bottom of the page or in end notes at the end of your work. You can also place it in a bibliography which lists all the works that you have cited. There are many different styles for citations. In many cases, different professions or academic disciplines use different styles. In the humanities and social sciences, the two styles that are the most common are MLA and APA citation styles. MLA is the style specified by the Modern Language Association. This is used in English literature and in other literary disciplines. APA refers to the American Psychological Association. Their style is used in most of the social sciences. The sciences each have their own style, with the CBE style used in biology, the ACS style used in chemistry, the AIP style used in physics, and the ACM style used in computer science. The simplest kind of work to cite is where there is one author. In the first example, we place the last name of the sole author in parentheses, together with the page being cited. But if the author's name comes up in the sentence, you don't need to repeat it. All you need is the page being referenced. Please note that the place where you introduce the source is called the signal phrase. In our example, that would be where we write, George Will reported that, and so on. If there are two authors, or even three, we list them all. But when you reach four authors, we simply list the first and use the abbreviation et al, which is Latin and means and others. Please note the period after al. It is an abbreviation for alia, which is Latin for others. 
Sometimes there isn't a listed author for the work you are citing. All you have is the name of the organization or company or university that published the work. In that case, it is the organization that gets listed as the author. And obviously we don't list last name first as we would do for people. Sometimes you don't know the name of the author. There isn't even an organization that claims to have written it. In a case like this, you list the full title of the work in parentheses or in the signal phrase. MLA style specifies that the works cited are at the end of the paper. What we see here is the listing for two different books. The first book has a single author with last name first. Then the title of the book is in italics without quotation marks around it. This is followed by the city in which the publisher is located and the name of the publisher and the year that it was published. Lastly, we indicate that this is a work in print. The second example is similar with two differences. The second and third authors are listed first name first because the references are alphabetized based on the first author's last name. Also, we include the edition of the book. A periodical is a magazine or journal that is published at regular intervals. These three periodical articles are listed differently from the books we saw before. In all three cases we list the author or authors as we did for the books cited. But the name of the article is in quotation marks and regular type. The name of the periodical appears without quotation marks in italics. The first article has the volume number separated by the issue number with a decimal point. Since the issues in a given year are all one volume, we simply list the year in parentheses, followed by a colon and the page numbers. In the second article, which appears in a monthly magazine, we list the month's name abbreviated followed by the year, a colon, and the page numbers. The last article in a weekly magazine differs from the second only by the inclusion of the day appearing before the month. This is the European style for dates. And please note that in all three cases, since we are citing a print-based magazine, the word print appears here followed by a period. For a website, we list the author or authors as before and the title of the web page. We then list the publisher of the website and the date when it was accessed. And we list the URL, also known as the web address. You can see examples here for a website with an author who is a person or who is an organization, as well as for a short work that appears on a website. When citing an article from an online journal, we need to include the volume and number of the issue in which the cited article appears. The article cited here was accessed by means of an online database. The database is Academic OneFile, and the link that you see shows that the database and the article 
were accessed through Adelphi University's library website. This was obtained through the online tool at the Adelphi University library website that generated the MLA citation automatically. The American Psychological Association or APA citation style is a bit different. The most obvious difference is that we have the date of the listing in parentheses. The page of the reference comes a little later. Book listings list authors the same way as in MLA citations, but it is followed in parentheses by the year of publication. If it is the entire book that we are citing, we don't need page numbers. For APA periodical articles, once again we have the year of publication in parentheses. If it is a monthly publication, we need to include the month after the year with the two separated by a comma. If it is weekly or daily, the day of the month is added after the month. While I like to believe that this lecture set has been helpful, there are several places where you can find more complete information. The University of Hawaii's library website is a good source for MLA citations. For APA, there is the Cornell University library site. And Purdue University's library website is useful for both.